The Volkswagen Tiguan is one of the best mid-size SUVs on the market. That is indisputable. Even though it's been around for like six years, a midlife facelift, the others still can't catch up to it. It's very rare that a mid-size SUV is this good. But there was always a gap in the range, a gap that had been gnawing at me for years. Volkswagen Group loves a fast SUV, but there wasn't a fast Tiguan. Well, there is now. This is the Volkswagen Tiguan R. Volkswagen really did take their time, and then a little global event happened, but it's finally here in Australia. Before we start on the Volkswagen Tiguan R, there's a couple of things I'd like you to do for me. First, hit subscribe and hit the bell button if you haven't already, to make sure that whenever we post a new video, you will hear about it straight away. Second, if you like this video, hit the like button, get involved in the comments, tell us what you think about the Tiguan R. Now, what's also gonna happen is we're gonna talk about a few things. We're gonna talk about what is it. We're gonna say how much it costs and what you get for that, what the interior space is like, how it drives, warranty and servicing, the whole bit. We're gonna chop it up down the bottom there. There's gonna be time codes and the chapter markers in the YouTube scrubby bar thing. <sighs> Let's get going. The formula is very simple. Take the Tiguan body shell, drop in the Golf R's engine from the Mark 8, add a tricky rear diff, huge wheels, active damping, and the R drive mode. It's loaded with gear, goes like a stuck rat, but will comfortably seat four with a boot full of stuff and take you where you want to go. This color, Lapiz Blue, is exclusive to the R and it's got a really lovely depth to it. I'm a fan. There are new front and rear bumpers too, and these lovely 21-inch alloys on massive Hankook Ventus tires. The Tiguan R comes in but one specification for $68,990 plus on roads. That seems like a fair whack of cash, but you can never accuse the Tiguan of being cheap. Or can you? For that, you get all of the Go Faster goodies, a digital dash, sat-nav, some R-specific badging inside and out, Matrix LED headlights, powered front seats, keyless entry and start, adaptive cruise, head-up display, and auto parking. Now, the price came down by $1,000 after the initial announcement because Volkswagen had trouble getting hold of Harman Kardon stereos. But you can option it for $1,000, so... Okay, that's fine, doesn't matter. You can also get a sunroof, which is $2,000. This car has the stereo, but not the sunroof. Now, behind this electric tailgate is a very clever boot. Now, I know that's a very strange thing to say, but I am easily pleased. To start with, you have 520 litres. The seats, 40, 20, 40 split fold, they can actually push forward. So, as well as getting the kids closer to you when you're driving, because who wants to be far away from the little bends, you do get more space. You get 615 litres. When you fold them down, you have 1655 litres. On top of that, this is one of those clever two position floors. So this is in its utmost position where the lip is nice and flat and you can get a little bit more depth by putting into the second position. Underneath is a fully six subwoofer. Uh, there's no spare in this car, the wheel's far too big. Uh, so you get a tire repair kit, which is helpfully in a little bag here and the jack and stuff is here. Right, here in the back, well, it's a Tiguan. So it's very, very comfortable and plenty of space. As I said before, you can Slide the seats forward and back. Uh, I don't know why that excites me so much. I know other cars have it, but I think the Tiguan was the first one to have it. Uh, you've got cup holders here, one, two, three. That middle one, I'm not sure how useful it is. And really, they're a bit shallow and don't, won't fit a bottle, but they're cup holders, not bottle holders. Uh, there are bottle holders here in the door. And what's nice about them is they're lined with carpet so that things don't rattle around inside if they're smaller than that bottle. You have a third zone of climate control back here. You also have USB-C one and a 12 volt to plug your phone in and little phone pockets on the back here. I think that's quite clever. Um, apart from that, it's just a really spacious rear seat. Uh, I'm sitting where I drive. I'm 180 centimeters tall. Tons of room, plenty of foot room. There's even foot vents under there, which will be nice on a cold day. Plus you've got the air vents there. Movable headrests. I reckon if you had the sunroof, you'd still have tons of room. So yeah, it's, I like the back of this car. It's very comfortable and the seats actually have a bit of shape and they're quite supportive. Not all back seats are like that. Yeah, I'd be happy back here. 
All right, here in the front, we have our first disappointment, and it's the seats. Now, there's nothing wrong with these seats. I mean, they're very nice Nappa leather and nicely stitched and got an R logo in the backrest and this blue stitching, all very cool. But they're not as cool as the seats you get in other R-Line models. And I'm pretty sure that in the UK, this car comes with the more racy buckets. So these aren't quite as hold you in as those seats, and they're not an option as far as I can tell which is a bit of a drag because some people do want that R experience, but I'm guessing that people are just gonna buy this because it's the top of the range, not necessarily because it's faster. But I think it would be nice to have that option for those who are like, yeah, yeah, I want the fast SUV because I can't get the Golf R for whatever reason. Apart from that, like the back, it's a really nice cabin. Not everything is bang up to date, massive screens and all of that, but it's, it's perfectly fine. So the screen here, it's like 9.3 or 10.3 inches. But everything works. The new entertainment system that I've used in the Golf, it's not great, but that's all right because you've got wireless CarPlay or Android Auto, and that replaces all that. It does have SatNav though, built in. Digital dash, very good, very clear. What I really like about the Volkswagen digital dash is it's really clear. It's a, it's, it's a model of clarity, you might say. Uh, nice leather steering wheel with the, the perforations here and the grips paddles uh, for the uh, for the racier folks. Now these controls on the steering wheel, they're touch sensitive. I don't know if they're that good or not. Like the, my hand keeps turning on the steering wheel heating, <laughs> which is really annoying. Um, and you kind of, you've got to learn which is better to brush across or which is better to press. Uh, and another weird thing is because they're backlit, they get quite warm. Um, that is one of the most ridiculous complaints I've ever had about a car, but I'm here to be ridiculous, uh, as some of you point out on the internet. Uh, this one and it has the Harman Kardon stereo, uh, which is really, really nice. It's not blow your ears out nice, just a really nice sound. Other things you get in this car, you get auto parking, uh, so it handles the steering for you. You also get uh, several modes of driving. So you get snow, off-roady type stuff. If you take these 21 inch wheels with those hand-cooked tires off-road, we need to have a long talk. And of course, when you go into uh, the road modes, you've got a choice of comfort, sport, and R. And there's an R button here, like a BMW M button. You can't configure it, which is a bit of a drag. Uh, but having said that, I don't think the driving experience is terrible in R that you need to be able to configure it yourself. We'll talk about that when we go for a drive. Uh, you've got storage up here in the ceiling. In fact, two of them. Hey, look at that. Uh, thought that was a DVD screen, but no, it's just uh, it's just storage, which is quite useful for sort of flat objects like phones and things to get them up out of the way if you're at the beach or something. Uh, you've got a spot for your phone there, two USB-C ports, nice little roll top cover for your two cup holders. What I like about this is the cup holder things are retractable. So if you want to put something else in there, you can. It's not just a cup holder, so it's reasonably versatile. And a bin under here. And like the back, you've got bottle holders in the doors that are lined with carpet. It's a great cabin. It's beautifully built. It's not an avant-garde design or anything like that, but there's some really nice touches in it, especially the R touches. Yeah, it's pretty good and very comfortable. When the weather's like this, you'll be very pleased to know that the Tiguan ships with seven airbags. One of them is a driver's knee airbag. The usual stability and traction controls. Of course, it's all wheel drive, which in weather like this is excellent. You've also got lane departure warning, forward collision warning, forward AEB, reverse cross traffic alert, lane departure warning, and lane keep assist, among other things. If you want to know more, make sure you read our full written review on the website, link in the description. The Tiguan R comes with the Mark 8 Golf R's Evo 4 2 litre 4 cylinder developing 235 kilowatts at 6500 RPM and a massive 400 Newton metres of torque. That is a stack of power and torque from a single turbo 4 cylinder. Volkswagen reckons you'll get 8.8 .8 litres per 100 kilometres and I very much doubt I could do that because who oh boy, this is way too much fun. Also in there is a seven speed twin clutch transmission, Volkswagen's DSG, it has gotten so good over the years, I cannot complain about it. And of course it feeds all four wheels. Now, here in the front, the diff is just Volkswagen's XDS, which is a brake based diff, it's nothing special, but it works really well. But down the back, 
That's a different story and we'll talk about that when we go for a drive. Volkswagen offers a five-year unlimited kilometre warranty on the Tiguan R and also one year of roadside assist. Whenever you service with Volkswagen, you get another year on top of that and it goes on for a few more years. Now, we don't have the service pricing right here right now, but hopefully through the magic of the internet and editing, we'll have those prices down there as well as the service intervals. Right, let's knock off a couple of the usual internet experts. This is not a particularly hard riding car. I am currently in the top mode, race. Uh, and while you know you're in race, it is not super uncomfortable. It is not as hard as, for instance, the BMW X3M, which is a step above this car. It's got a lot more power and torque and all that, but it rides really hard. And it's no this is nothing like that. I reckon a lot of people will leave this in race all the time just because that's the best mode to be in and the ride is pretty good and it's been on all sorts of different surfaces today and it's been fine. I mean, the reality is it shouldn't ride this well because it's on massive 21 inch wheels, 35 profile tires. Like there's not a lot of give, but the adaptive damping is really good and it soaks up absolutely the worst of it. It's not gonna be soaking up too much in race obviously, but it's, it's very good. But the payoff of any light jitter but what it is always is planted this car feels so planted so it reminds me a lot of the first time i drove the original audi sq5 this this kind of physics defying vibe that the chassis got because it really sticks to the road and nothing seems to unsettle it mid corner bumps fine uh changing camber fine all good it really does stick to the road i mean you've got to be doing really dumb speeds to make a mess of this and maybe on a track that's gonna come out. But honestly, only a few of you are gonna track this and people who buy these cars to track them do know the limitations of a nearly 1800 kilo SUV. And knowing that it's 1800 kilos, it really doesn't feel like that. It, it feels just as light as the other ones, which admittedly are only another 100, 100 or so kilos lighter, but it doesn't feel chunky because it's got a really good change of direction. When you hit the steering wheel, left or right, it goes left or right. There's a little bit of movement in the body as, as it settles down onto the outside tyres, but nothing dramatic, nothing dramatic at all. And that's when you're pushing on, when you're just driving around, you're not going to notice anything. It's a really comfortable car. And when you knock it back out of race into the more civilised modes, it feels like the 162 TSI I drove a couple of months ago, just a bit calmer with the engine. Now this engine, what a cracker of an engine, so little turbo lag considering how much power this thing generates. I mean, 235 kilowatts is an absolute crap ton of power. And it revs to 6,500, whereas most turbo engines of this size are revving to six, six and a bit. And it is a very free revving engine. It doesn't feel tightly wound or, um, or like it's gonna burst because, you know, it's, it's being over, over tuned. It, it does feel very drivable, which again, I wasn't quite expecting given my experience with the previous version of this engine in the Golf R and uh, a couple of other cars. I think what's really important about this car is while nearly 70 grand doesn't sound like very good value for money, in the company it keeps, it's very good value for money. The BMW X3M is now nearly $120,000. That's a lot more money. The Audi SQ5 in both petrol and diesel, they're another 25 grand over this, maybe a little bit more. Well, 35, in fact, it's quite a lot more. And then, you know, the GLC 43, which is the Merc, well, that's miles away, that's, that's up in the 150s. This car is barely slower than any of them, despite them having more power. Some of them have a lot more stuff, but not the kind of money that we're talking to justify the price difference. Bizarrely, the car that is closest to this is the Porsche Macan T, which is newly released. It has this motor in it, but with fewer kilowatts, which I find, interesting to say the least but really this is an enormous amount of fun it's a proper hoot so really this is kind of the bargain performance suv from europe unless you're going to bring the skoda into the reckoning but i don't think the skoda drives as well as this does 
But honestly, this is such a great thing to drive. It's fun to drive in pretty much any situation. The dreadful weather I've had while I've had this car, this is the first time this car has seen the sun in my hands, just so we're clear. Even though the weather's been dreadful, it is still a bunch of fun to chuck around and it just feels really planted. And what's really doing that for you is the way the diffs are set up. So there is actually no special front diff, it's just Volkswagen's XDS, which uses the brakes to create what they call a virtual diff, which is a bit cheeky. It's just torque vectoring, right, using the brakes. But it works really well because at the back, there's a diff with a bit more going on. Fundamentally, what this thing does is it keeps the nose turning when ordinarily 1800 kilos is telling the nose, nah, you're not turning. So when you throw it into a corner and then you hit the throttle, it brings the front around to where you want it to be so you don't get any push or any understeer. And when you're braking hard into a corner, it makes sure things don't go awry, uh, especially at the rear end. It's a really good diff and the way it's set up is really nice and really secure. So it's quite different to the uh, to the Golf R in that sense, in that it's it's more about security than playfulness, but you're still having a ton of fun, especially in such a big, heavy car. So I made a couple of points before about the seats. I would like the grabbier seats, partly because they're, they're cloth or Alcantara. I think they'd be, they're more for me. Some owners, or most owners, probably won't care, but it'd be nice if they were an option. I did say that before. When you are driving quickly, these touch sensitive buttons are a bit annoying. Uh, like before I was turning left and my palm hit the R button and it fell out of R, which is kind of irritating. I also said that the R button wasn't configurable. There is an individual mode, but you have to go in and set that up in the screen and you have to select it in the screen. You can't just hit the R button to do what you want it to do like the Audis and the BMWs do. So that's a minor quibble. Um, again, I don't mind the race mode. I think it's perfectly fine. The steering's the right weight. Everything feels fine. Yeah, and you know, again, I, I've mentioned the weight of this car twice. The brakes are phenomenal. They're so good. They look great too, those blue calipers. And you know, the brakes look kind of small inside those 21 inch wheels, but they absolutely work. And the ABS is set up really, really nicely. So it doesn't, again, cut in too early when you're having a bit of fun. And uh, that will work out quite well on the tracks if that's your thing. But on a road like this, <laughs> it's so much fun. But you don't pay for it when you're on the drive home on the normal bit, or you don't pay for it when the kids are in the back and you know it's been a long day. You can just turn it all down. And it's all very calm, cool, and collected. So uh, much more of an all-rounder than the Golf. The Volkswagen Tiguan has always been the mid-size SUV benchmark. Even though it was late to the party, came out of nowhere, bam, set the standard. This resets the standard. Even though there are more powerful ones, they're all more expensive, some of them have more stuff, but they are that much more expensive, it is hard to justify. No, it's not a jacked up Golf R, it's its own thing. And that's fine because not everyone can live with a Golf R, but pretty much anyone, if you've got the money, can live with this. It's a lot of fun. You know what else is fun? Jumping in puddles. <laughs>